Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, Mavs fans. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow coming to you just after uh, the Mavericks fell to Utah Jazz, 114 to 109. How are you, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we're back at it after the All Star break. And I mean, obviously, this is a sucky result, but I mean, if you are an agnostic, uh, fan in this game you didn't have a uh, rooting or betting interest in this one it was a pretty fun game i mean it was this was a wild game to come back to after the all-star break yeah yeah i i <laughs> missed the first half so why don't yeah. you kind of walk us through i came home and the Mavs were up by seven six, six, 67 to 60 at halftime yeah uh i mean the mavericks offense started off just it was almost basically the first half was almost perfect offense uh from dallas i mean the Jazz were really focused on making sure that Brunson and, and Doncic could not score early. And Powell just got to the rim continuously over and over again. And guys found him. Uh, I mean, Powell finished with 22 points, but I mean, I don't know what he had in the first half, but uh, I think he, I think he had not, I don't remember what he had in the first half, but I mean, it was from the get go, the Jazz were conceding, you know, letting Powell kind of run loose so that they can maybe pressure the ball handlers a little bit. And I think the Mavericks did a great job finding him. Shooters were making shots. Uh, it was a little up and down at the beginning because the Jazz were also shooting really well. And then the Mavs were just kind of able to string together some stops. And they're off. I mean, like I said, their offense was just looking really good and the ball was moving uh, really well. And then unfortunately, the second half happened and kind of the things that we've seen the last three years kind of just happened again with the offense just kind of slowing down Luca, maybe doing a little bit too much, taking too many long jumpers, guys standing still guys, passing up shots, guys, not making shots. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 it was kind of like, it was pretty crazy how first half, second half was like, here's best case scenario for the Mavericks uh, in a playoff series against the jazz. And then the second half was like, okay, here's the worst case. Um, <laughs> It was pretty crazy how clean cut it was between the halves. Uh, but yeah, that it was for for how well they played offense to start this game. You know, the Utah obviously cranked it up at home. Mm-hmm. Gobert was phenomenal, and I feel like they just did not counter well in the second half. Well, I mean, the thing that I saw, what I saw in the second half was a little too much iso ball. Yeah. Um. I also saw something I need to address this. Like the refs were fucking dog shit, but that's not why the Mavericks lost. Um, The Mavericks lost for other reasons, but the refs were terrible. The Mavericks shot eight free throws that game, including one in the second half. That's bad officiating again, not why they lost, but it it did not help in a, in a kind of painful game. I thought, you know, what I want to understand is why in the fourth quarter they repeatedly hunted Luca ISOs on Gobert. Like that was just bad strategy. That was bizarre. And maybe they were thinking, you know, I think Luca, you know what, he made that really nice two. They were down three and he made that really nice two range. Yeah. It was very difficult, but he made it. And then he came back down and got a three 
and I wonder if he was just like, okay, I got this. Like I'm, uh-huh. it's here. It's hero Luca time. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to get stifled by Gobert. This is the guy that can't, you know, this is the guy that can't stay on the court in playoff games. You know, is what they say. And, you know, he can't, he can't, you know, he's a good regular season player, but you know, this is the moment where we're going to take advantage of him. And, you know, Luca's going to pull, you know, have the ball on a string and spread things out and go bear, man. He just, he rose to the moment. And I feel like I can't remember when it happened, but like Luca tweak, I mean, he tweaks something every game seemingly, but I feel like he like at some time in the second half, he was like reaching down towards his heel and ankle. And I, and I feel like he kind of tweaked something and he didn't look right to me after that. He, mm. he lost a little bounce, lost a little lift. And I feel like he just, you know, he was trying to go one-on-one and go bear and go bear was not letting him get past him. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's, see, the thing that's tough about that is like how much of that is coaching and how much of that is Luca going, this is what I'm doing. I would say uh, it's probably a little uh, a, more of the latter, but the yeah. fact that it is more of the latter, I blame on the former where if you're calling these timeouts and you're talking about what to do, there's got to be more simpatico things going on where they figure this out. Now, granted, I always expect Luca to bounce back from a bad game. Once in my life, I would love Luca to show up after time off and not look like shit. It, <laughs> it, yeah. The last time I remember this happening is like the first game in year two where he was just out, out of the gate, bang, bang, bang. Now the Jazz are a challenging matchup. matchup. We've been debating this in Slack for days. Yeah. because i i sort of think that the luca factor overwhelms how good the jazz can be on defense but what we saw tonight and and matthew phillips actually pointed this out is that the mavs kind of i don't want to call it like i don't want to be disrespectful here but like they play a janky ass defense where they're getting some some crazy results out of something and i'm not sure how long it can last with the personnel that they have and the jazz shot the hell out of the ball against the mavericks 16 of 38 from three and they got a lot of open looks. Like the Mavs defense was giving Bogdanovich open corner threes. That's not good strategy long term. Like that's not a that's just not something the Mavericks can win over a seven game series, in my opinion. Yeah, and he was two of eight. They kind of got mm-hmm. lucky on some of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had no answer for Mitchell. I mean, no one's really had an answer. He, Mitchell's had a really like low key. I think Mitchell's had a really really good season. I don't think people realize how how good he's scoring. Mainly because I think everyone just I mean, everyone just so expects much. his threes to drop off. And, and, and they not. just don't. Yeah. Um, he's shooting 43% from three on nine and a half, almost 10 attempts in the month of February. He's been yeah, he, he's just good. He's just good. Yeah. And the Mitchell is difficult because, you know, this Mavericks defense has been successful. And they've been successful by kind of bully, you know, being able to bully ball with Finney Smith and Bullock and Kleba, you know, using – kind of size and length but Mitchell they don't mm-hmm. really have a guy like they don't really have a guy to to stop I uh, don't Mitchell. ever want to see Dorian Finney Smith on a primary score ever again I just <laughs> well, I've seen it for it's years. a small guard a small yeah, guard that's just so small tough. guards cook him because he would rather give up the shot than get beat to the rim and these guys are all great shooters duh duh I'm scarred Mitchell has no problem stuff. coming off that screen and firing mm-hmm. like firing. and that's 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 the player, the player, the the archetype that probably mm-hmm. is most. I mean, it's most deadly to like a lot of teams, but like yeah. the way the Mavs play D, that's the player that can kind of bust their defense open. Yep. Uh, well, and then you know, I hate talking about the bad, but it's sort of at least leading with it. But they did lose, and this yeah. was also just an absolute bizarre game from Maxi Kleba, where in twenty five minutes you look at his box score: three points, three rebounds, four assists two steals, two blocks, one turnover. And again, he played a pretty he played a pretty amazing defensive game. Getting four stocks is again in, in this environment is pretty amazing. But he turned down an open 3 at the end of the game where Rudy is just camped in the paint and he pump fake air to give the ball to Luca. And if you don't want to take that shot, if you don't want to be on the floor, don't be on the floor. Yeah. Uh, you know, one uh, it was um, it was it was Jeff Skin Wade who tweeted something along the lines of like, I, you know, and this is before the break when Maxi had just finished an amazing two game stretch. He said something to the effect of like, "This is why I don't want them to trade Maxi because when he is good, he is great." And I think Skin's right. I have just seen a lot of Maxi 
not rising to the occasion on offense when they need him. And this harkens back to your piece that you wrote last night, <laughs> where it's just, it's like, what is going to happen when they need a big shot? You know, it's like, like today was Dorian's 500th career three pointer. Well, good. He hit one in 28 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, this sort of stuff just, it's a wasted performance in the sense of you get a lot of good from Davis Bertans and Spencer Dimwitty, who I hope we where I think we should kind of, you know, talk about yeah. more at the end and just kind of close that on a positive note. Um, but there, it's just, it's frustrating. It, it's, this game is just the, the sort of thing where, you know, the Mavericks might fall to fifth. If they, they have to beat the Jazz the next two games, I really think if they hope to finish in fifth. Otherwise, I think them falling to sixth is a likelihood um, over the the next 23 games. Like, their schedule is just tough. They're currently a half game ahead of Denver, and mm-hmm. Denver is not slowing down because, you know, Jokic they is They have not an easy schedule. Down. They also yeah. just – can I ask you a question, though, because I didn't really see a ton of, of, of the first half. Was – this just an off game for Brunson or is this more of the length bothers Brunson and we need to talk about it? Length length. It's the latter. Uh, I think the thing that you can really, man, we talk about this all the time. I'm really sorry for being a dead horse, but Oh, for one from three, mm. uh, he just, there were so many opportunities where I think he, if he had a quicker trigger, he could have gotten up some more threes. And I feel like he just kind of, pump faked himself into worse looks you know yep. because again you know length seems to long lanky good defenders just seem to be his kryptonite and which is so, which is understandably short right like he's six right. one right and he's not you know part- you know he doesn't get by on necessarily athleticism you know he's he gets by on on ball skill and, and craftiness and 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 being a really good uh dribbler and penetrator and he's a great finisher but man it was just a lot of occasions where the ball kicked out to him and I was thinking that's a three, like that's a look. And he would pump fake and dribble in and pass out or pump fake and, and, you know, shoot a miss a mid range or, or, you know, it was just like, it, it's very difficult. I think for the Mavs offense to keep, you know, be consistent, you know, from the first half to the second half, you know, you're wondering why did things get gunked up and tail off? And it's like, well, guys have to shoot and guys have to make shots. And I know that the team shot, 40 you know almost you know basically 44 percent from three uh for the game but toward the second half it was just it's different you know dorian only shot three threes brunson only shot one one like two of your major starter perimeter player starters combining to only attempt four threes and these are guys you're going to close the game with that's tough you know because luca is going to create three-point shots and it's just something I, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's so bizarre because Brunson's three point rate in college was exponentially higher than it is now. I don't know. Well, he's if, a shot more lately and he's and kids yeah. even talked to him about it, but this is the sort of questions, you know, and, and Jason kid just gave a terrible ass quote. That's to our advantage. Jason kid on Rudy Gobert switching onto Luka Doncic on the perimeter. Like that's just not fucking true. I know that's him not wanting to, I mean, I wonder how much that's just, after what the previous regime coming to this one, yeah. like I just have to imagine that it's just like, I'm not going to call out Luca after a game like this. So I, I, I mean, hopefully, I mean, he could be sincere. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think this is such a weird game to like, just emotionally because the Mavericks did like, they did do a lot of good things. And I think they did prove they can hang with the jazz. And if this was a playoff series, I think it would be, a six or seven game series either way. And, you know, we saw some promising things and I almost, you know, we're going to move on to Bertans and Dinwiddie, which are the, you know, the really promising things. But on the other hand, the way they lost, it's just, it's just, you know, PTSD to how they lost every playoff game the last two seasons, you know, and it's, yeah. there's going to be an expectation that for this team to do more, not only because, you know, we feel like maybe the team's a little bit better, but also because, Hey, you're not going to play Kawhi Leonard and Paul George again. <laughs> so, you know, th- you just theoretically think, okay, well, if they took those two teams to six and seven games, uh, and those are two of the better, you know, that's just a horrible matchup for the Mavs. You know, what if they get a little bit better matchup? Like they should, you know, they should win. But these good games against good teams, the way they lose these types of games, it's just, I understand why someone might freak out about a loss like this because it's like, here we go again. You know, 
Uh, and that's just kind of how I feel about the game. It's weird. It's weird. It's not good to lose, and it's really not good to lose this way. In, in which they kind of always lose these good to these yeah. games against good teams. But we can move on to the good stuff if you want. Yeah, I mean, Dinwiddie was really fun in a way that I've not seen him be fun tonight. Uh, yeah. Some of the like shot taking. Yes. Um, the fact that it went in is great. It's a <laughs> there are a lot of oh no 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 yes yes shots. type shots yeah <laughs> oh yeah but. Frankly, they need that. Yeah. <laughs> like, with Tim Hardaway gone, you need people that are willing to take, like, oh, fuck, fuck. Ah, there it goes. Like, it, this shit's just going to happen. Like, Luka can't be the only guy willing to take shots. Right. And you look, I mean, he's not a great three-point shooter, but he took four of them. He took a pull-up the- off the dribble that was some Jason Terry yeah. in, the, in the third, I think it was the third quarter. Yeah. In the third quarter. He was good. He's yeah. good tonight. I, this is the kind of game where you kind of, like, I wish, you know, Brunson would play a little bit like this sometimes, you know, not, I know it's tough for him because he's, he's such a team guy and I know he doesn't mm-hmm. want to be selfish, but like there should be games where he look, you know, I mean, there are games where he looks like that, but like in clutch moments, I wish he would play like that. And, but it does help that Dinwiddie is a considerably longer player than Brunson. Mm-hmm. And another impressive thing was only one turnover um, for Dinwiddie. I mean, he only had two assists I mean, he was not moving, you know, he was, he was definitely looking for his shot tonight, which is good. They needed, they need that from the bench. So I don't know if lose, if there was, you know, is it worth it to, you know, lose this game, but you get like, does it matter more to see Dinwiddie have a game like this than it does whether they won or lost? I don't know. Let's see what Dinwiddie looks like in the next three games, which are going to be very difficult. Uh, But if this is the sign of things to come that, I mean, this, this is what they kind of need. And then the next thing is going to be, okay, does he start closing games? Because, but we got to see him string together a couple more games like this before we start having that conversation. I think Bertans was fun. He's just a heat check <laughs> and I'm so okay just... with it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. The shot is pure. It looks great. Um, but what are we talking about? You know, we're talking about the starting lineup. You know, Brunson, Brunson and Finney Smith combined for four three point attempts, and Bertans had eight and 19 minutes. And it's like, man, they just need a guy like that. Uh, I mean, some of the, I mean, he was taking like, they were inbounding the ball and like passing it to him from the backcourt up, up onto the wing, and he just no dribble would shoot. And I'm just like, all right, just kind of shots that you think Rick, you know, would probably strangle a player for. So I appreciate that he's, able to do this uh didn't really contribute much elsewhere but that's okay because that's his role is to make shots so yep. again yep. i you know i don't want to get too down on the loss despite the fact that it like really triggers my alarm bells about how they lose they lost the playoffs last two years but if bertons and didwitty can get going in in a, in a fashion like tonight then that's probably better to close out the season going forward yeah, I mean, we just got to start. Uh, we just got to start thinking about playoff matchups. And granted, they play these guys two more times, so this just yeah. might not be a thing. But it, it's challenging because at this point, when you look at who they could play in the playoffs, right. the only team they really want to see is Memphis. It's the only team. Yes, I agree. It's the only team that that I feel very confident in the matchup. Uh, yeah, every yeah. other every other game is just spooky. Every, sure. every matchup, but sure. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like should we should we be madder than we are? We're pretty we're pretty chill about this game considering well, how much of a gut punch it was. I think. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I think part of it is because I didn't watch the whole game, so I'm not That's true. Like I, I caught the frustrating part, and <laughs> yeah, you got you could you watched the worst part of the game. So you think I would be madder, but it's just I've seen the clutch time stats for the Mavericks, and I know some of that should be filtered out because it's games that didn't involve Luca, but just seen this Luca performance stuff and it's like when it's great it's amazing and when it's it he just they need to figure out other things they just need to yes. and I I don't know what they do there I you know it's do I think they could beat the Jazz in the seven game series yes I do because I think that the shooting could become hot I really really do but I also think that that it would not be a fun series for us to watch and like this game the second half of this game felt very grindy and i worry that this gives like there's sort of a because the mavericks don't have the ceiling that they did with porzingis because porzingis is an outstanding player um when healthy it it just there's a little bit of a blueprint going on 
where if Luca isn't scoring like crazy, the Mavericks are just a little easier to beat. Um, I don't know. It, it... Yeah, I mean, you think, you know, the Mavericks have been on this run and Luca has been playing out of his mind. And this was maybe the first game. What this was the first game. I mean, he didn't he didn't shoot great in the Miami game, but he still played well, I thought, because the way Miami played defense against him. Uh, this really feels like his first poor game in a while. Uh, and he's been going suit like, you know, they've been winning these games, but you know, 49, 45, 51, 33, 40. It's like, it's just, it's a little frustrating for him to look human for the first time in what feels like two weeks and the team not able to win. And it just puts more pressure on him to have to have these 45, 46 point games for the Mavericks to win. You know, uh, Mm -hmm. this would have been a nice game to be like, okay, Luca doesn't have it. Brun, you know, Brunson, the guy we're going to pay 80 million or a hundred million dollars. Like this is, this is what you're supposed to, this is the game. You, you, this is why we will, we'll give you that contract. And he didn't show up. And, uh, you know, Kleba, who's been so great the last two games, you know, he just didn't make anything. And, you know, Finney Smith, we just gave you that contract and he scored, you know, seven points in 28 minutes. So yeah. that, that, it was just, just, you know, that part of it is disappointing, but, uh, you know they gotta no rest for the weary with this schedule man they gotta get right back on it and play some good teams yeah you know road trips are what they are um all right guys this has been kirk (laughs) Kirk henderson and josh bow we're uh we're here we're gonna figure out uh what we're doing the next several days i i do this this uh i was i was hoping with josh and i would would uh hit this is a very selfish ridiculous thing i was hoping that we would hit kind of a new uh, uh podcast download from per month but the mavericks losing always shuts that down because yeah. nobody listens after they lose this is going to be a weekend podcast after a loss we're, we're, we're what are you gonna do? <laughs> okay guys um before i get out of here just wanted to give one quick shout out uh i went and watched a high school basketball game between um lovejoy and woodrow wilson high school and it was just a great basketball game uh lovejoy won but it was just i don't know it, it seeing seeing like like high competition amongst play like like just is really well executed and you know basketball's different at every levels and sometimes you're just going to see garbage games in college and high school that's, that's a great game i just want to shout it out because it's fun um we'll be back sunday night uh the green room the uh it'll be group therapy since the mavericks lost we'll be going up here for sometime tomorrow afternoon if you want to listen to that um and otherwise come to mavsmoneyball.com and we will figure out what's going on a little later in the weekend Bye, guys.